Well, hello. I am taking over Daddy Adventures today and making the fan favorite for my family is Meatloaf. It is Monday, so we have Meatloaf Monday here at our house. The boys have had fun adventures, and now it's time for them to eat. So, earlier, um, last week actually, I went to Aldi. We've lost that video, but since um, I'm we lost it. I'm going to show you how to make the meatloaf anyway. But at Aldi, I picked up um, three bell peppers, one, two, and one's already chopped up in the chopper, three, and four onions. And I got that for roughly $3. That's probably on the high end, but Aldi was really cheap. I was inspired by the Fruitful Vines, my friend in California who um, makes videos and um, watch her channel and subscribe to her channel. She's the Fruitful Vines, but she has inspired me and showed us how to get things cheap at Aldi and Costco over there, Sam's for us, and um, different places. So I did my first Aldi haul and got our um, stuff for meatloaf. So in this meatloaf, it calls for, um, if you're making it just for your family, so if I made it for uh, myself, my husband, and our three boys that eat, uh, will be eating the food uh, before the baby doesn't eat with us yet, um, then you could um, just half this recipe. But I have actually doubled the recipe because my parents live next door and they join us for Meatloaf Monday. So um, it calls for half of a bell, um, green bell pepper and half of an onion. But like I said, since I have doubled it, I do a whole bell pepper and a whole onion. So the three will last us for three weeks. So what I do is while I have the chopper out, I go ahead and chop up all of these things and put and separate them in baggies so that next Monday I will have um, the bell pepper and the onions already chopped up, and that way I only have to chop every three weeks since we do meatloaf every Monday. So here is how you um, will prepare your green pepper. All right, so to do your onion, which I've already, I mean, I'm sorry, your pepper, which I've already um, actually sliced one up, but I wanted to show you um, how I do it. There's many U other YouTube videos on how to do this, I'm sure, but for this purpose, I usually cut the top off and I cut the bottom off, and I discard those. Um, not sure if you can save them or not, but I don't. And then um, my husband actually taught me this trick. You kind of go around the outside, or the inside, I'm sorry, edges. The onions are already kind of making me tear up, so. And uh, you just kind of pull out the middle, and you throw that away. And there you have your green pepper that has been de-seeded, and for this chopper, I kind of cut it in at what I call um, in my head when I'm cooking and talking to myself. I, I call it like a rough chop. I cut out those, um, that flesh, that white flesh in the middle, and then I kind of cut it in um, little, littler pieces to fit in my cutter. So about this size. So I have already thrown one of these through the chopper, so I'm going to set that one actually to the side and, and add it to another onion in a minute. So in here I have a whole bell pepper cut up and now I will as you see I've already rough chopped a onion so I will demonstrate how this works you put it in here and you this one's getting a little old so hint hint new one for Mother's Day or my birthday it's sooner and you slam it down and in there you have evenly chopped pieces of onion so I will finish chopping the rest of this onion and I'll be back in just a minute to show you the next steps of Loaf Monday all right, so I have chopped up the onion and bell pepper, and I'm ready to add the rest. So what you're going to do, I'm going to go through the kind of things you need to go ahead and get out, as I've shown, and then I'll go through the measurements. At the end of the video, um, I will post the list of um, everything in the measurements so that you'll have it. You don't have to take notes right now. So you will need a pair of gloves. That will be for the mixing. I'll show you that, my tip for that. Um, also for the topping, you'll need brown sugar, you need ketchup, you'll need bell pepper and onion. Um, again, I have doubled the recipe, oh, um, so you would want to um, half all of this um, for just a smaller family. Um, I have breadcrumbs, um, salt, pepper, and dry mustard, and I'm not sure if I mentioned the eggs, but eggs. We have an egg allergy in our house, so I'll tell you how we deal with no um, portion of this with no eggs. 
So you will need a cup of breadcrumbs. These are the plain food line brand. Um, I just get whatever's available, whatever's the cheapest. Um, I've used panko before. I've ran out of breadcrumbs and didn't realize it and crushed up crackers. So you just kind of need a, a, a crummy a binding for it. But you will need a cup of that. And dump it in. You will need a um, one. Um, oops. You will need two thirds of a cup of ketchup, and then you will also use the ketchup again for the topping. We are in North Carolina, and we have fruit flies bad in the summertime. So there's two thirds cup of ketchup. And you will need a um, two tablespoon, or I'm sorry, two teaspoons of dry mustard powder. Save that measuring cup because you'll need the same thing for the topping. And we'll need two uh, teaspoons, and I'll just kind of—it's not really a rhyme or reason to this. Um, I do have my husband here tonight, so he is helping with the kids, and. Um, usually they're over there crying and screaming, but I hear part of them. But, um, so there's not really a rhyme or reason to measuring this exact. Then you will do a, um, a teaspoon of salt. And I just use the same one I used for the mustard. A teaspoon of salt. And you will do a half a teaspoon of black pepper. So I use the same thing and I just kind of eyeball it. Less washing is much better in my house. So I just kind of eyeball the pepper about half. Oh, I think I got a little too much and we will dump that in. So we have our ground beef, um, which we'll add in a second. We have our uh, peppers and our onions, our egg we add last, our breadcrumbs, our ketchup, dry mustard, salt, pepper, and I'm going to get the meat out and show you our next step here in just a minute on mixing it. Okay, so um, while you were gone, uh, or while we were gone, I added two pounds of ground beef, just dumped it in there. I added my gloves, and uh, these are actually different ones than I showed you, those um, ripped, they were too small, we had barium from Pop Pop. But anyway, um, I have, so I have the two pounds of meat added to all of those other ingredients we just added. So, and I have my pan all ready. Um, anything that you, because you're about to get dirty with the meat, so anything you don't want to touch with meaty hands, um, you get all ready. So, oven's preheated, pan is ready, um, I'm about to mix. So, I get in here and I mix and kind of just get it dishing around. Um, if you have an older child that helps you, this would be a great project for them. My oldest is five, and then we have two two-year-olds and a baby, so they are not quite old enough to be mixing meat yet. Um, you see two eggs set aside, and I will tell you in a minute how we do that, but I'm going to mix some meat. All right, now that I have incorporated all the ingredients in together, um, what I do is I go ahead and make a mini meatloaf for my son who is allergic to eggs. Now, his allergy to egg is um, baked in eggs and, of course, eggs by themselves. Hopefully, they say he'll outgrow them, but right now, he is allergic to eggs and peanuts. So, um, what I do is I make a little mini meatloaf for him. Now, his allergy is not so severe for eggs that they can be processed with. Um, his peanuts allergy, we always have to look on the package or anything to see if something was processed in the same manufacturer, but for eggs, it's okay. So, as you can see here as I'm talking, I make the mini meatloaf, kind of shape it up with my hands, just pat it together. The eggs, it's okay. It doesn't really change the flavor as much. His just is a little bit more crumbly, and of course, it is safe for him to eat. So, there is his mini meatloaf. Um, the standard in my house is I always put it near the handle for him and put it facing a different way so that when we go to serve it up, everybody knows who the egg allergy uh, meatloaf is. So, after I've made his, and since his is okay to be on the same um, tray as the, as the eggs, uh, he just can't have the eggs in his, I add two eggs into our meatloaf here and I do a little bit more mixing. 
So I used to make, um, this is now with the eggs and I've made an uh, egg allergen free one and if you really needed to in your house you could put it on a separate platter but in ours it's okay and now I've added the eggs and incorporated them in so I used to when I first started making this meatloaf make two big old hunkin meatloafs form them and put them on the tray but since um, the egg allergen one we decided to I have decided to make everybody their own mini meatloaf and it seems to um, go over better um, for dinner time so I will make everybody an individual meatloaf and get them on the trays and then we'll get ready to bake them all right, so to make the mini meatloaf, you just get kind of a hunk of meat. You try to make them as similar in size and shape as possible. So you just kind of get your um, ball of meat here and you shape it with your hand. I've had lots of suggestions over the um, months now that I've made meatloaf Monday um, of how have you tried a cookie, I mean um, a muffin tin or a loaf pan or things like that. I have found that just shaping them making them kind of in a ball and just kind of patting them together um, has been easier. It's easier for me as far as um, feeding the whole family and having the egg free one. It's also uh, easier in cleanup. As you can see I have aluminum foil stuck down so at the end of the night we will fold that together and will be easy 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 cleanup. So and everybody kind of likes their own little individual. Also when I use a loaf pan I've tried that before and it just seems a little bit greasier that way. So this way um, you'll see when we pull them out there will be grease formed um, in different pockets around my tray here but um, we can remove our meatloaf and not have that grease on our plate. So this just kind of helps it to be less fatty, less greasy and um, hopefully healthier in the long run. Um, not sure how, what um, health um, variety meatloaf is in, but for us it's better than frozen something or another for our big family. <laughs> All right, so you can tell I have all the meatloafs ready. Here's my egg allergen. It's turned the different way and at the handle. Then I have some fairly large meatloafs. They turned out larger tonight. I'm a little hungry. Um, my dad will say, oh, you're hungry. You made big ones, and he'll still end up eating a whole one. He loves the meatloaf. So we have everything ready to go. We have our oven heat preheated to 375 degrees. And so now we will put them in for approximately, depends on your oven, but mine takes about 25 to 30 minutes. And so we'll see you back here in a minute to put on the topping. While um, these are baking, I will go ahead and make the topping. I have uh, brown sugar and ketchup to put in the topping. And um, so I will put in the ingredients for those. Um, I believe, I'll come back and tell you, but I believe it's two-thirds cup to two tablespoons of brown sugar. If I'm mistaking, I will um, correct that in a minute. And also, again, at the end of the video, we will try to put a list of all the ingredients typed out so that you can um, have those all in one spot rather than having to take notes. See you in a bit. All right, it has, all right, it has been 30 minutes and we have pulled out our meatloafs. So I'm gonna do a quick check. You want your meatloaf to be at least, oh, my timer's still going over there. You want your meatloaf to be at least um, 165 for ground beef um, or close to it at this stage because we're going to add the toppings and then let it cook another 10 minutes. So as long as it's very close to it, which it doesn't look like mine is getting that close to it. We have about 150. Um, let's try another one. See what we got. Yeah, so I'm going to need to put mine in there for a little bit longer before we can add our toppings because we're just at 140, between 140 and 150 on the meat thermometer. So we will stick it in there for a little bit longer and check back in in just a little bit. All right, we have gotten our meat up to about 150. It's climbing up there. Um, I was checking another one. We've gotten it up to about 150 and we have another 10 minutes to go because we have to add our topping. So I've made up the topping here. It is ketchup with brown sugar. So if you're making it for one family, it's one third cup ketchup with two tablespoons of brown sugar. And for our family, since I doubled it, it's two thirds cup ketchup with four tablespoons of brown sugar. 
and I have one of those nifty um, little mop things here and you could use that to brush it on and make it all look pretty um, but in our family of six we um, plus grandma and pop pop next door we um, use less dishes so that we use to baste meat and everything else with so here we're going to just take a spoon I'm gonna try to hold the camera and show you but we just kind of spoon it on and take the back of the spoon and kind of mix it around or stir it uh, spread it around there and then we do each of them like that then we'll put it back in the oven for 10 minutes and they will be ready to go tonight with our meatloaf we are having mashed potatoes and peas um, every Monday I try to kind of mix it up to do a little bit different of a side since we have the same entree every week we try to change it up with either salad or um, corn or whatever's in season and whatever sounds yummy to us that week so the meat is the same the sides are different and change it up a little bit we'll see you back here in a minute when it's all golden and ready to eat all right we are definitely amateurs at this um, YouTube blog business but here is my recipe for meatloaf uh, meatloaf Monday I doubled the recipe for my larger family. This is the recipe for a small, um, I guess, normal sized family. Um, I'll show you how much, when I doubled it, I'll show you how much I made in just a second. But I'll give you a second for the recipe there. And then over here, I will show you, sorry for the movement, but we got some hungry, hungry boys. I will show you here, it made one, two, three, four, five, six meatloafs and um, we're getting ready to eat and you can see where the um, fat kind of displaced off of it and I'll lift them up put them on plates let them cool and we'll get ready to eat I hope you enjoy meatloaf Monday